Very good evening. It's 8 o'clock. I'm Tony Ndoro live from Johannesburg, and these are your top stories tonight. We are scared of the mayor. We are, we are scared of, 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 of course, of, of the people that surround him. Hey. Abasla Libasem John Dolo is under attack. They are worried it may be because of their statement referring to Ete Queenie Mayor Zandile Gumede as a gangster mayor. JMPD's new big brother, undercover crime busters, is paying dividends and leads to arrests. No, oh, I'm quite excited because, I mean, I've, 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 I've always wanted and dreamt of having this fiber around me. Soweto receives the country's first free internet access in a township. All right, thank you guys. We'll catch up with you later. Let's start here. Shack Dwellers Movement, Abbas Lalibasem John Dolo, is convinced it's being targeted by the Etequini municipality. Questions have been raised about a break-in at its offices where sensitive data was stolen. But the mayor has dismissed the allegations. Dayson Thathia reports. The Abashali Basem Jondolo office is tucked away on the top floor of the Diaconia Center. But on Wednesday night, thieves got in after dark. Two computer monitors and an external hard drive were taken. It contained sensitive information, including data on all 55,000 Abashali members. The Land Invasion Unit in Etawini, the Metro Police, including the, some of the ANC councillors um, in the Metro um, who have been found guilty by the Deben High Court of assassinating our leaders. Uh, that makes us to have such uh, belief uh, that this incident has much to do with our work, which is really very political. Sikode claims his office was targeted, and he thinks there's a direct link to the mayor. We suspect that it follows the statement that we have issued, which the statement itself followed the arrest of the mayor and her appearance in Deben um, High Court. In that statement, Zekode referred to Zandile Gomede as a gangster mayor. Given the death threats we continue to receive in number of um, councillors in the city, so we are scared of the mayor. We are scared of, 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 of course, of, of the people that surround him, her, who will do everything in their power to subvert the law and, of course, um, kill members of Abatlan. Relations between the Shack Dwellers movement and the ANC-led Etequini municipality have always been strained. Last year, its angry members marched against Gumede and her administration. The mayor's spokesperson, Mtunzi Gumede, has told ENCA Abathlali's latest claims are complete nonsense and accused Zikode of stealing from himself. Gumede says his boss is too busy focusing on service delivery. Desanthathia, Durban. Supporters of the embattled Etequini mayor Zandile Gumede have marched to the ANC's provincial headquarters in Durban. They have handed over a memorandum of demands included is a call for the media to actually be regulated. Earlier this week, Eteguini Mayor Zandile Kumete was arrested on several charges, including corruption and fraud. The charges are related to a 200 million rand Durban solid waste tender. She was subsequently released on 50,000 rand bail. The NC Youth League was quick to call for her head. But her supporters have hit back, saying hands off. The alliance of Pegitele and Tandutolo and other youth league leaders in this, in this region and in this province who are going on social media and vilifying the mayor and the chairperson of this region, we are very, very angry about that. As a women's league, we believe in the leadership of Mama Sandin, and we are saying that we must not interfere with the law. ANC members led by councillors handed over a memorandum of demands at the party's provincial headquarters. Provincial Executive Committee member Begin Duli says the leadership will look into the demands. We will, as such, uh, hand it over to the people that are relevant. The ANC's provincial leadership is yet to meet and deliberate on the position it'll take. And for now, 
the mayor remains in her office. Mawande Keswa, Durban. President Cyril Ramaphosa has appointed advocate Hermione Cronier as head of the new investigating directorate at the NPA. Ramaphosa announced the establishment of the unit in February during the State of the Nation address. The unit, dubbed the New Scorpions, is aimed at exp expediting investigations and prosecutions of state capture cases. It will be located in the office of Shamila Batoy, the National Director of Public Prosecutions. Cognier holds a master's in public administration from Harvard University and an LLB degree from the University of Cape Town. She was involved in the establishment of the anti-corruption task team at the NPA. Three people have been arrested since JMPD's undercover crime busters launched on Thursday, on Tuesday, sorry. But they've had a little bit of help from technology where over 400 CCTV surveillance cameras are now operating in the Joburg CBD. The local Lekulu has the story. Crime is rife in downtown Joburg. While the city sleeps, thieves come out to play. They come through windows, stealing whatever they can lay their hands on. Those driving home are not spared. And walking down the dark streets isn't recommended. The undercover unit of 80 officers is proving its worth. With three people already arrested and illegal firearms recovered, the officers are also foiling criminals' plans. The new a CCTV reaction unit uh, responded to three incidents yesterday. The one was in Forsberg, where the officers prevented hijacking. Uh, the suspects then uh, shot at officers, officers shot back, and the suspects fled. They did uh, take the lady driver's handbag and cell phone, but uh, they left without uh, the Fort Koga, which they were after. With over 400 surveillance cameras monitoring the streets, the JMPD is confident it's gained the upper hand and residents can breathe easier. The bigger advantage of the new CCTV reaction unit is the, the response time. Perpetrators who are caught are then paraded on camera. This ensures they can be easily identified when evidence is presented in court. Lindogushe Kulu, Johannesburg. So Soweto is the first South African township to get free internet access. It's thanks to a partnership between government and telecom. Soweto Fiber was officially launched today at the Orlando West Secondary School in Vilakazi Street. Our reporter, Maseko Rathlacha, has more. For the beneficiaries of Fiber to the home, this day is worth celebrating. Like Tato Matlazi, as he prepares to join his friends at school, he says he's excited about being given the same opportunity as pupils in the suburbs. Now in matric and wanting to study medicine, access to information once he's at university will be easy. Oh, I'm quite excited because, I mean, I've, 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 I've always wanted and dreamt of having this fiber around me in terms of making my life much more easy. I mean, I, we cannot avoid the fact that we are living in the fourth industrial revolution and therefore things are becoming more digital. Therefore, if I have it at home, even life on its own becomes much more easier for me. The excitement is high among pupils here and parents are advised that the internet is a great source of education and information. With both hands. But they're serious about this. Addressing pupils during assembly on Friday, Telcom CEO C. Pomasego said fiber would also be launched in other parts of Soweto, including shopping centers. But what has taken so long? Immediately after the appointment of the new administration, a final policy direction will be issued by the department. So there's no battle, it's just a work in progress. Soweto is the first township in South Africa to receive fiber. This will not only benefit schools, but also businesses such as these on Vilagazi Street. Maseho Ratlacha, Orlando West, in Soweto. Saru Kumalo may have lost two teammates in a tragic turn of events. Kumalo made history yesterday, becoming the first black African woman to scale the peak. Irish climber Seamus Lawless was a member of the same expedition. We understand he disappeared in an area known as the Balcony. 
There was another shock earlier in the day. Indian climber Ravi Thakka passed away. Reports suggest he died in his tent after reaching the summit. Rescue teams searched for Lawless earlier today. Meanwhile, Kumalo is descending the mountain. Her communications team says she is safe and sound. Okay, still to come on E! News. Liberians have made an emotional plea to their president to back the establishment of a war crimes court. And in your business news, the RAND weekend in early trade after the dollar lifted to near two-week highs, this on the back of positive U.S. economic data. Welcome back. Rofiwa joins us now for some business news. For an update, Rofiwa, Amku is at it again against uh, Sibanya Stillwater, but they lose again. They lose again indeed, Tony. So they had, um, so just a bit of context, Sibanya had put forward a plan to buy all share um, of a Lonman, struggling um, platinum miner, and Amku went to the um, competition tribunal to appeal the decision that had been approved by the competition commission, saying that if the sale goes through, thousands of jobs are going to be lost. We do know already Lonman is struggling and a couple of weeks ago they released a cautionary saying they really need this transaction to go through because they just don't have capital to complete critical projects. And in any case, there are about over just over 10,000 jobs on the line at Lonman. So all in all, including the uh, merger job losses that would happen, just over 13,000. But the competition tribunal has approved on condition that the jobs that are lost are within the merger. So for now, they have suspended the job losses just until there's an arbitration process happening there just to see how those job losses can be uh, reduced to as few as possible. So what's going to happen now is there going to be a vote by the shareholders, both companies, on the 28th of May to approve the, uh, the sale of Lonman to Sibanye, about 4 billion rand. But investors are saying they're paying too little. If you look at Lonman, it's got a beautiful array of assets in terms of platinum, and it would be making Sibanya one of the biggest platinum uh, producers in the world if this happens. So investors are hoping that they'll pay a little bit more than four billion, but uh, Lonman is desperate for anything that they'll get at this time. Okay, but the platinum price is depressed at the moment as it well. It is but depressed, yeah. The markets today? Market's not so depressed today, so the JSC closed a little lower, falling for a so, uh, second consecutive week. So the all share tracked weaker global markets there. Once again, those escalating US China trade tension is to blame, and it's countered the positive post election sentiment that we've seen. If we take a look at your commodities, commodities were all down with a slump in the platinum price. The oil price is slipping but is still staying above $72 a barrel. If we take a look at the local unit, a Chinese official today saying that the trade negotiations with the U.S. had severely hampered by bigger tariffs impo imposed by the U.S. last week. This weighed on the rand, although analysts noted that the local currency would have probably fallen further if it wasn't benefiting from some positive post-election sentiment, Tony. Rafiwa, as always, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, let's move on and take a look at uh, news making international headlines now. Um, we stay here in Africa, though. Liberians are calling on President George Weah to set up a war crimes court. They say those responsible for human rights atrocities during the 1986 and 1999 civil wars must be brought to book. Human Rights Watch is supporting the call. It says recommendations by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission for criminal prosecution uh, have not yet been implemented. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's uh, legal woes are growing. Ecuador is considering taking legal steps against Assange for allegedly trying to use its embassy in London as a center for espionage. Uh, London police dragged Assange out of the embassy in April after his seven-year asylum was revoked. He is currently in a London prison for breaching his bail conditions. He also faces rape charges in Sweden. We'll go to Louis, who's standing by at our weather center for your live uh, weather report. And then she was constantly unimpressed, had a permanently downturned mouth, and became one of the internet's first pet fluencers. We paid tribute to Grumpy Cat.
Welcome back. Let's go straight to Louis Fernandez, who's at the Weather Center. Louis, good evening. Still warm days for us up ahead. Good evening, Tony. That's 100% right. Warm weather across much of South Africa continuing into the start of your weekend. But we have some fog at the moment along the west coast that persists into tomorrow morning. So that's going to keep that area a little bit cooler as well as potentially bringing a little bit of drizzle to the peninsula first thing in the morning. But for the afternoon, sunshine to partly cloudy conditions over the country, warm for most areas. But we are keeping an eye out for a cold front that will be approaching from the Atlantic Ocean. That system will be affecting the Western Cape, but only later on Sunday. Let's take a look at your detailed forecast for the start of the weekend and it's going to be a sunny Saturday for many areas in the Northern Cape. Just a touch cooler towards the western parts, Calfinia and Springbok for a change, staying below 25. It's going to be a cool day along the Atlantic seaboard where we could have some fog, maybe even some drizzle first thing in the morning, but aside from that, a generally warm day for the western Cape. Actually becoming quite hot for some areas in the Eastern Cape, Somerset East at 29 and 31 as a maximum for Adelaide. And KwaZulu-Natal will also be rain-free on your Saturday afternoon, Durban getting to a very comfortable 27 degrees Celsius. A 25 degree high has been forecast for Emelachleni as well as for Standerton, but a chilly morning as one might expect for the Impumalanga Highfelt. It'll be mostly clear and very warm in Limpopo, a little bit of cloud cover for the low felt, but certainly no rain. And we'll see similar conditions for the northwest with a high of 27 for Mahikeng, Zerist and Rustenburg. You can expect another mostly clear and warm day as well for the Free State. Bloemfontein starting off cold but becoming very warm as the sunshine continues. And as one might have guessed it, it's going to be another sunny and warm day across Gauteng. And Pretoria will even manage to stay in the double digits overnight. A quick look ahead to your conditions for Sunday. And while much of the country will be sunny and warm, it's going to be hot for KwaZulu-Natal and the Eastern Cape with Bergwins ahead of the cold front that will bring evening rain to Cape Town. And then that front pushes further into the interior on Monday, bringing wintry weather to parts of the northern and western Cape. That's all from the Weather Center. Back to you, Tony. Thank you so much, Louis Fernandez, with a weather update for the next few days. Okay, now, some days are grumpier than others. We all know this. The Internet's most famous grumpy cat with a face that launched a thousand gifts has died in Arizona. Grumpy cat's downturned mouth and unimpressed expression was the universal sign for displeasure. Seven-year-old Tada Sauce, or Tad, was one of the Internet's first petfluencers. She gained online fame for her perpetual gloomy gaze, launching an empire with worth millions. Uh, Tad died in the arms of her owner, uh, Tabitha Bundesen, after complications from a urinary tract infection. News of her passing was shared, uh, was shared with her nearly 11 million Instagram followers with a caption that read, Some days are grumpier than others. All right, let's bring you your top stories once again for this evening. Abbas Lalibasem Jondolo is under attack. They're worried it may be because of their statement referring to Etequini Mayor Zandile Gumede as a gangster mayor. JMPD's new big brother, undercover crime busters, is paying dividends and leads to arrests. That's it from me and the crew behind the scenes. We'll see you again next time. Have a good weekend. Good night.